What is the smallest seed you've ever planted? Carrot seeds, maybe? Pumpkin seeds? When you planted them, do you remember what you imagined they would grow to be? Welcome to Rhythm and Word, a weekly worship offering a midweek spiritual pause, brought to you by Fourth Presbyterian Church of Chicago. I'm Joe Morrow, and in this fourth and final installment in a series exploring biblical images and stories about planting and growth, we'll ask you to consider those seeds that you've planted. Would you have planted them if you didn't know what would grow from them? And have you ever planted a seed that grew beyond your ability to control it? I invite you now to center yourself wherever you may be as we begin preparing our hearts for God's Word to be planted there through Jesus' teaching and the gift of music. Let us worship God together. In the fourth chapter of Mark's Gospel, Jesus asks his disciples and followers, what's a good image for God's kingdom? What parable can I use to explain it? And then he proposes this answer. Consider a mustard seed. When scattered on the ground, it's the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But when it's planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all shrubs. It produces such large branches that the birds in the sky are able to nest in its shade. The seed steals the show in this parable of Jesus. I used to teach this to children using an actual mustard seed, the kind you can easily find in the spy aisle of the grocery store between the marjoram and the nutmeg. I'd wide my eyes and place that single seed on the tip of my finger and intone Jesus' words, the smallest of all the seeds on the earth, and explain that it's so small that they can't even see the one that's on my finger right now. Of course, there'd always be at least one preschooler who was not impressed. She would triumphantly declare, I can see it. And that's when I'd put my hand back in my pocket and continue to the part about the birds. Well, the vision that Jesus invites us to see is much more about the birds anyway. 
The first hearers of this parable would have recognized the imagery of birds nesting in a tree from the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel, the 17th chapter, where God promises to plant Israel as a noble cedar tree. Under it, every kind of bird will live, the prophet says. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. Israel is the tree in the vision, and the birds are all the nations of the earth. It's a prophetic vision of God's future when all peoples will be united. Everyone in Jesus' audience would have recognized it. And they would not have missed the wrinkle that Jesus introduced to it, the tree. The majestic cedar up to 130 feet tall, eight feet around at the trunk, imminently recognizable, admired, revered as a symbol, gets replaced. Not replaced by another tree, but replaced by a shrub, a bush. The mustard seed is almost a weed. Palestinian farmers of Jesus' day would not have particularly cared for the mustard shrub because it had a tendency to spread across their orchards and it was hard to control. The birds like it, though. And I think that's probably more to Jesus' point. Still, there's no splendor in a mustard bush. And the mustard seed is nobody's national symbol. Yet it is the symbol of the kingdom of God. So I wonder what small or unremarkable things God is planting in our lives in order that they might grow to welcome the birds of the sky to nest in their shade. Amen. We don't know how prayer works, but we know it often does its best work first and foremost within us. Prayer begins to shift things within us and then the ground beneath our feet. Its outcomes are often surprising and unexpected, but filled with a grace that we cannot easily fathom or control. Confident that in prayer, God will help us to blossom and grow free, let us come to God in prayer. Wherever you are in this moment, I invite you to breathe in the grace of God and exhale anything keeping you from it. Now let us pray together. Your love is wild, O oh God, beyond our control and imagination. And yet it is there to be received and embraced. It takes root in us and through your spirit, we know it grows day by day. We ask for your blessings, the blessings of your love to take root across our world this day. May all the world's people See it in the very creation we inhabit. The rocks and trees, the seas and mountains speak to its grandeur and glory. And the tenderness within human community, the compassion that can be found even amongst strangers helping one another. These are witnesses to your love for us. Help our cities and nations, their governments and residents embody your love through wisdom and justice. Help us to be generous and gentle in our dealings with one another. Let us practice life with compassion and mercy in all that we do. We ask for the blessings of your love, O Lord, to be around those near and dear to us, to carry them through times of uncertainty and strife, where fear abounds about how they might heal, find their daily bread, receive companionship, and gain their dignity. Let your love restore them to health in body, mind, and spirit. Let your love also give comfort to those making their passage from this life and those who mourn loss. In all things, let your grace run through our lives, surprising us with joy and helping us to live and share abundance. We ask all this in the name of the one who put on skin and became God's love for us, in the name of Jesus, who asked us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If 
it's magic Then why can't it be everlasting? Like the sun that always shines Like the poets in this rhyme Like the galaxies in time Well, if it's pleasing Then why can't it be never leaving? Like the day fails Like on seashores there are shells Like the time that always tells It holds the key to every heart throughout So if it's special, then with it, why aren't we as careful as making sure we dress in style, posing pictures with a smile, keeping danger from a child. It holds the key to every heart throughout the universe. It fills you up without a bite and quenches every thirst. So if it's magic, why can't we make it everlasting? Like the lifetime of the sun, it will leave no heart undone. For there's enough. Go now into your day, into your week, to love and serve the Lord. May you grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. God's peace be with you until we meet again.